We shot a wedding this past week at the RBN in San Diego, and we had, let me count how many cameras we had. We had a C70, Canon C70, Panasonic S5 II. We had a Black Blackmagic Cinema 6K, the full frame one. We had our uh, DJI drone. We had our DJI action camera, the Osmo Pocket 4, and we had the DJI Action 3. I hope I'm getting those right. And I got one shot with my iPhone. That's seven cameras we used for this wedding and all seven of those uh the footage from all seven cameras are going to be used for the film i made a teaser using all seven of these cameras again and i want you to see if you can spot which one of these looks better because for one of them i used one software to color correct to color match all of them and for the other one i did it by hand in lumetri so let's watch this watch this with me and tell me what you think which one do you think looks better so there's a left and there's a right here and just enjoy it and let me know what you think about which one looks better so let's go through this let me unmute this let's go All right, so those are the two videos side by side. So if you can tell, I used uh, the, for the manual uh, editing, the manual color grading, the manual color correction, I try to give it more of a punchy look. So if you're looking at this, one of them obviously looks punchier. The other one was graded with the plugin that I'll tell you what it is in this in this uh, video. Um, obviously, we're in uh, Premiere right now, Adobe Premiere, not DaVinci Resolve, which I know a lot of people will say you don't need any of these plugins. You don't need to do any any of that. You can just go into DaVinci. But what what is my intention here? My intention is here that you can obviously go in color grade, color correct by hand when you're editing wedding footage or commercials or anything. But sometimes if there's a tool that can make things easier for you to get the job done, for you to quickly match things, then that tool is very beneficial. And this tool allows you to also be a little bit more stylized. I wanted this to look more cinematic. And I thought, hey, can we add more grain, more uh, halation, more of that within the software versus doing it by manual hand, which I usually do, which obviously takes more time. So before I get into that, let me, well, I guess I don't need to get into anything. So this video is not sponsored by anyone, but the plugin, which is Dehancer, did reach out to me almost a year ago saying, do you want to try our products? Do you want to see if, what you can do with it? And I ignored, 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 ignored until I realized that there was other, someone else had made a video on how they use Dehancer to make something look a little bit more cinematic, look a little bit more polished. And I was like, that looks actually pretty good. So I actually responded to the email. I was like, hey, if you guys are still interested, you know, I'd love to give it a shot. And they were very nice. They're like, here's the software. You don't have to say anything, obviously, good, bad, whatever, but here's a software, use it, and just tell us what you think in a video. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm usually not very fond of things. I'm usually kind of the angry YouTuber or the, I'm not angry, but the one that doesn't doesn't get, uh, I'm not biased, I don't think, that, that quickly. I actually paid for Film Convert. I've been using Film Convert for a while. I mean, I stopped using that a few years ago just because there were different LUTs that I'd like to put in. So let me show you my manual uh, editing, just how I do it usually. So if I'm editing something like this is, for example, from a Panasonic S5 II, I'd drop Lumetri in there. I'd find the LUT that I like. Maybe I'm adjusted it a little bit myself. And then I, you know, adjust the highlights, shadows, things like that. And, you know, the vibrance, saturation, if I want to key out certain colors, if I want to change certain colors, I do that. And then I go match it with whatever I'm doing with the other cameras. Like this is the C70. This was the drone shot. This was the Osmo uh, 4. And this one is the Osmo 3. And both look absolutely beautiful. Obviously shot in 10-bit, 10, 10 obviously shot in log. And uh, this is, this is a C70, C70. 
Uh, this was Black Magic, so we had a few Black Magic Six game there, just because I was like, why not? We have the camera, although it was a tripod shot. And then what I do is then I create an adjustment layer, which I throw in a little extra LUT in there to kind of match it, although the opacity is only at 82%, so this is lower. And then the very top layer is my halation. I know people might think like this isn't the correct way to do it, whatever. This is just uh, this is just the way I've been doing it. Works for me. Clients are happy. Looks good on YouTube. Looks good on phones. Looks good on TV. And these are kind of my favorite cameras I like to use: the Panasonic S5 II, C70 for my second shooter, and recently, like for the past, I guess this year, I've used the Blackmagic on a tripod. So it is a little bit of work to go through those to match different cameras when you have different shooters. And then you want to look at it. Do you want it to look kind of natural or do you want it to look a little bit more color graded like you're making actual film like a movie? What is your intention? What is your direction with this? So I kind of know based on the lighting how I'm going to go about this. So when I edited this first, I gave it a very natural look because I was like, we're going to use the answer to give it more of a cinematic look. So let's just keep it natural, not do anything too crazy with it. And then when I went back with Dehancer, so just in case you didn't know, this this shot here is a, uh, this is a butterfly, two butterflies that were symbolic to this wedding that I shot with my iPhone when I arrived. And I was like, this is beautiful. So when I used it, it tied in with the story later on. So obviously I threw an ultra key on there to mask it out. And then I used Dehancer for that as well because there is there are different um, film cameras that you can you know take the take the uh, log or the non-log and match it in there so that is i'll go into that as well but just to show you over here like this was a uh, panasonic s5 ii let's see you know you can you can go in and just like anything else you can increase like the saturation you can um change you know the exposure the whites the blacks you can make things brighter things like that but I'm essentially just trying to match these so that when someone's watching these, they're not going to be taken out from how it's looking. I Meaning it's going to be obvious that these are like the greens look different or the skin tones look, look different. So that's that's the main objective to do that. So the cool thing is when you go in here, you can literally go open up, choose your camera. You can use the log that they're giving you, but you can choose your camera, find your camera. And there's a ton in here, R5, R5C. The Black Magic, the iPhones, the 300,000 Sony cameras that exist. There's a Venice A7S III, FX3, all those guys. Red, even the Panasonic S5 II, which I didn't think is going to be on here. That's in there too. I don't see a GH7 yet. So for those of you that have the GH7, you might have to update this. But, you know, the DJI's cameras are on there. Obviously, we just said Canon and those guys. So I didn't see any Nikon, actually. No Nikon, no Fuji. Oh, there is Fuji. Confinity. I do not see Nikon. So just FYI, I don't see a Nikon in there. But you throw it on there and you try to match it by just changing your camera. So it's minimal in that. If your exposure is correct, if your white balance is correct, then everything is pretty much set for you. You just have to choose your camera and choose your uh, film stock, basically. So it matches it matches across. And I use the Kodak Vision 3250D just because it looked cool to me. I like the little warmth for when they're together like that. That's intentional. As you can see, I'm changing the temperature compensation to make it warmer. And then the ones that were at night, they're kind of already warm. So I'm not adding too much warmth to that in case you're wondering what I'm doing. The thing that I noticed that was pretty cool was like, for example, if you look at this shot, this shot is extremely overexposed. Let me show you without anything. It's extremely overexposed because this was exposed before the sparklers went on. So once the sparklers went on, it turned pretty uh, pretty overexposed, but and this was a Panasonic S5 II, by the way. When I use Lumetri to go in and just decrease this exposure, I don't think it does as good of a job as when you go to the enhancer and use this. So I went to negative 1.2. It just looks like it does a better all around job. And then I decreased the temperature on this because it was too warm. Um, and I was pretty, pretty surprised why that part worked better. I mean, I'm sure some things are going to work better than Lumetri, but I, I just didn't think the exposure part was going to look better. Um, film converts, I think, also works better than just going in and changing it in your uh, in Lumetri. So prior, if I were to go in, I'd add halation on top or grain if I'm trying to add grain. But here, everything is is there's a little tab for it, so you just press enable or not. So if you go to film grain, you can press enable or take off, and you can use the 6, 8, 1635 or full frame, or I guess this medium format, 65 millimeter. I think that's medium format. Halation, same thing. You got to enable it. Um, not enabled, enabled. And 
I didn't mess with the film damage because I don't want to do that for this wedding film. But if I'm making maybe a video in Halloween, I might add a little bit of damage to that. I have no idea what gateways, get, gate weave is or film breadth is. I didn't really mess around with that. I was just trying to get a, a teaser out for my couple within a week. So that was my goal. So that's why I only mess with these things. And I'm sure everything else is pretty intuitive as well. But now it comes down to why you would purchase this. You would purchase this, I guess, if you're trying to save time. You would purchase this if you're trying to match a lot of different cameras. If you're not, then I don't think this is really for you. If you're just using like an FX3, you may just be cool with, you have a LUT that you like. You just throw on the LUT and all of them should match. You shouldn't have any issues. For us who use all these different cameras, it is beneficial. I'm going to use it for the film as well, just because I like the results. Um, and it's pretty time saving in my opinion, but you know. Some people might might not use it because they're in, I, I don't know if there's a Final Cut version or a DaVinci Resolve version. There probably is. If you're, you know, if you already have something that's working, you might not want to try it, but you can get the free trial, I believe. I do have a code that they gave me that if you use, they gave me a small percentage of it. If you want, it's below. Cool if you use it. If not, no worries. But essentially, maybe give it a try. Get the free trial. Give it a try. I don't know if you get 10 days or two weeks or whatever. Give it a try and see like, hey, does this make your life easier? Can you adapt to it quickly enough and use all its benefits where it's worth it? It's uh, not super expensive either because I think you can get the whole um, lifetime for like 600 bucks or something versus, you know, some of the other ones that are going to be subscription based that are going to be monthly 30 bucks, 20 bucks or annually 100 bucks, something like that. And it's going to add up if you're using this for a few years. So this is essentially my first time using Dehancher. I literally installed it, got the trial code today, literally edited it today and just um, matched it with, uh, compared it with the other film that I edited yesterday. So I have a natural one and I have the Dehancer one and which one you think is better is up to you. You may like it looking more punchy and natural. You may like it looking more like cinematic, more graded. So up to you, but you can do both with, um, but you can do both with Dehancer, obviously. Now, if you wanna see how I took pictures with this camera at a wedding, or how I use this camera to film a wedding, check out the videos above.